Welcome dear friends to my next video. This time we will take another type of questions which I saw in the PSC question paper set. That is a statement or a sentence was given and the candidates had to identify what expression it was. And they were given many choices like tongue twister, palindrome, hyperbole, euphemism, etc, etc. So in order to identify what you should have, you should have a knowledge of all these terms. What are these terms? So let us have a brief discussion on what these terms are. Okay. First, let us take the tongue twister. Tongue twister, you know, it is there in English. In your own language also it is there. They are the repetition of some sounds in a sentence. They are also called alliteration. Both are the same, alliteration and tongue twister. Now I will tell you some sentences which are tongue twisters and you try to repeat after me. Okay. Example, she sells seashells by the seashore. Second, a black bug bit a big black bear. Third, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Fourth, Betty Batter bought some butter, but the butter was too bitter. So Betty Batter bought some other butter to make the bitter butter better butter. So these are tongue twisters. The term tongue twister itself is a repetition of T sound. So now you would have understood what are tongue twisters. Now, and I hope you have repeated after me, it is very easy to repeat. Now, this is an exercise usually given to learners of English for what for improving their fluency and pronunciation. Many such words, phrases and sentences are made up or collected and the students are made to repeat it. So, what is a tongue twister? It is a repetition of speech sounds in a word or a sentence or sometimes a phrase. It is also called alliteration. Both are the same. So you know now what is a tongue twister. Now next is palindrome. What is a palindrome? It is a word or a phrase or sentence which can be read backward and forward. These are also used as games for children in the same way. But actually it is used for improving your vocabulary and improving your use of words in a sentence. We'll look at some examples. Example, Malayalam. You can read backwards and forward. Another, there is a palindromic date. We had a palindromic date this year. February 2nd, 2020. 222020 was a palindromic date. Then some other simple words are there, which are palindromes. Radar, R-A-D-A-R. Madam, M-A-G-A-M. Refer, R-E-F-E-R, race car, R-A-C-E-C-A-R, dad, D-A-D, mom, M-O-M, taco cat, T-A-C-O-C-A-T. Now there are some palindromic sentences which are very famous. What are they? Was it a rat I saw? It is a palindromic sentence. Provided when you read it this way, you have to take the alphabets, not words separately. So when you take the alphabets and form words, it is the same as was it a rat I saw. Similarly, Madam in, in Eden, I am Adam. You read it forward and backward, it is the same. I am telling you once again, don't take the words, but split the alphabets to form words. Mr. Owl ate my metal worm. Next, damn it, I am mad. And the last one, do geese see God? These are palindromes. So what are palindromes? Palindromes are the words or phrases or sentences which you can read both backward and forward. Now another figure of speech is hyperbole. Hyperbole. What are hyperbole? Some people are in the habit of using hyperbole in their talk, even in their casual talk. What do they do? They used exaggerated statements. Like, 
I have told you a million times not to do that. Here a million times is a hyperbole because nobody will say the same thing a million times. So some people are in the habit of using such expressions. It is very cold here. Even penguins will wear jacket and hat. Means what? We want to show that it is very cold. It is biting cold. So we made a comparison. Even penguins will wear jacket and hat in this chill. Penguins, you know, they live only in the Arctic area. And they are used to chill weather. So this is exaggeration. Cold is exaggerated with a hyperbole. And the image of penguins wearing jacket and hats, it is a figure of speech. They are usually, why are they used? They are usually used to give a clear and colorful picture of what you are trying to explain. Your only aim is to influence the people completely. Some more examples are there. Jesse Owens was faster than the wind. Here we are comparing him to the wind and we are exaggerating his skill. Another one, if I fail, my parents will kill me. Here I, I just want to point out the risk in failing. But I am telling the extreme. My parents will kill me. Oh God, she is as thin as a toothpick. Here what are you trying to do? You want to alarm the listener. The listener will be alarmed. That girl is very thin, just like a toothpick. It is very hot. I am drowning in sweat. What, what does it mean? You are telling about the hot weather and you are sweating and you are drowning in it. An exaggerated statement. You just want to show the intensity of heat. All these are called, this, such uh, figure of speech is called hyperbole. Look at my garden. The flowers are dancing in the breeze. The flowers, I am comparing the movement of the flowers to a dance so that I want to highlight my garden and the flowers in it. So whenever an idea is exaggerated to create an image, even though it is far from the truth, we call it hyperbole. Next is euphemism. Euphemism means it is a polished or polite or a pleasing way of expressing some harsh ideas. It is, you want to convey some uh, harsh ideas, unpleasant idea to someone. You just polish it with a little decorative words and present it. Uh, you, that is called euphemism. Euphemism we also practice in our everyday life. When we talk of some things, let us see, for example, uh, if somebody died, instead of saying died, we say passed away. We are making it a little more polite, a little more uh, bearable. The speaker is being polite here and trying to minimize the harsh reality. Such practices are called euphemism. It is a figure of speech or a decorative language just like hyperbole. For death, we use words like eternal sleep or went to his heavenly abode, etc. Like that, we want to tell someone that you are foolish or stupid. Instead, we make it a little polite. You seem to be mentally challenged. So, we don't use the word foolish or stupid. Similarly, handicapped people, we call them differently abled. That is also euphemism. We call the poor people the underprivileged or the children of a lesser god. To make it a little more polite. Then a person is bald in his head. Ram. We can't say you are bald. So what will we say instead? Look, Ram is getting a little thin on the top. He will take in a humorous sense. When you say Susan is unmotivated, means what? She is a lazy girl. Instead of calling her lazy, we are telling there is no one to motivate her. She is unmotivated. She is under the weather, means she is sick, not healthy at all. Thus, euphemisms are used to make harsh expressions pleasant and to present it in a very polite way. Next is oxymoron. What are oxymoron? The combining of two opposite ideas to create an effect. To create an effect that is called oxymoron. They are also called paradox. Paradox statements, paradox words, etc. 
it can either be taken as a joke or sarcasm that is poking fun at someone or something uh, oxymoron itself is a combination of two opposites oxymoron is actually a combination of two greek words oxis which means sharp and morons which means dull or stupid a sharp dull person or a sharp stupid person means very stupid person so oxymoron itself is a paradox now let us look at one sentence the lockdown is only a minor crisis we shall get over it minor crisis crisis has a very serious meaning but to minimize it we have used minor similarly now the only choice is to stay at home only choice choice is usually given among many things or many opportunities but only meant there is no choice at all here there is no choice at all because that word only is there here it is made clear that we have to choose the option that is given to us that is why only choice is given only clearly denotes that there is only one opportunity similarly it was an awfully good song awful the word meaning itself conveys something which frightens us or something that disturbs our mind but here it is used to show that the song was extremely good awful awfully good song next is don't you enjoy your food you are growing smaller day by day growing and smaller are opposites what we meant is becoming smaller and smaller day by day but instead of growing up you are growing down similarly it is an open secret means what open secret is also two opposites it was to be kept a secret but now everyone knows it and they know that it is to be kept a secret so everybody is telling to the others and telling them to keep it as a secret such a thing is called an open secret so all these are oxymorons what are they two opposite things which are combined together to show the intensity of any one word another is personification what is personification you see many uh, non living things which have no life at all non living things but we consider those non living things as a person and just tell they did that they did this etc just like people or animals or a living thing doing it and we give it the image of a living being such expressions are called personification let us look at some examples the wind howled in the night here howled is a word of personification wind is personified the waves roared and beat itself on the si- sands here howled roared beat itself are actions only a living thing can do we use these words to show the intensity of these sounds another one i saw the butter cake smiling at me meaning what i was attracted by the butter cake i wanted it but i am telling instead the cake is smiling at me i am personifying the butter cake making it a person time and tide waits for no man time and tide are non living objects but they move very fast even without our knowledge so uh, just to give it an intensity give it a height we are telling they wait for no man it was winter cold was creeping in slowly here cold is a non living thing but we are giving it life creeping means slowly coming in towards us like a snail or snake so we are giving a non living thing the image of a living thing by telling that they did that they did the actions which a living thing did such words or such expressions are called personification next is senek dekhi senek dekhi this is also a figure of speech where a part of something represents the whole class that is we are speaking of only a small part of something just to represent the whole class you will understand more when you listen to the examples when we say we have to teach him abc 
we mean the alphabets. So we can't say A, B, C till Z. Instead, we will say, oh, we have to teach the child the ABCs. Means we have to teach the child the alphabets. We just take a portion of it and mention it in the form of a whole thing. Similarly, he is the breadwinner of the family. He is the breadwinner of the family. Here, bread stands for food and other facilities that you enjoy in a family. That is, he is feeding the whole family. He is meeting the expense of the whole family. Next, the greybeards have their opinion. Means, the greybeards here stands for the elderly people. Another one, I forgot to take my glasses. Means, here glasses stand for spectacles. So a part of something or a representative of something taken for the whole group is called a synecdoche. Another one is onomatopoeia. What are they? They are the formation of a word from its sound. Some words are formed from, the, from sounds which is created. Let us see, like breeze. What do you mean by breeze? A slight and comfortable wind with a soft sound. It has the sound of a breeze when we say. So it is generated, that word itself is generated from that soft wind. Another one is gurgling. Gurgling means what? The act of uh, putting warm water and salt to in your throat to cleanse your throat. That is gurgling and it creates a gurgling sound also. The car splashed water onto my dress. There is a poodle of water on the road. As the car passed by, the water was splashed on you. That splashed itself has some effect of the word. And some noises made by machines are sold. Machines are also onomatopoeic words. What are they? Beep, clang, honk, boom, crash, bang, etc. Some sounds that we humans make are also onomatopoeic words. What are they? We keep our finger onto our lips and say shush. Shush is the word for keeping quiet. Then giggle, a soft and continuous laughter. Where we don't laugh out loud, but that giggling soft laughter is there in our throat. Next is murmur, whisper, mumble. All these things are speaking very softly so that only you can hear yourself. That is whisper, mumble, murmur. Then another great sound made by a snake, hiss, the hissing sound. So it is, it uh, has been taken from the sound that it makes. So these are some of the expressions that we have to be familiar with. Now try to identify such expressions in your everyday usages and watch my other videos too to get more English exercises and keep in touch. So subscribe please. Thank you. Thank you for being with me.